Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how to remove a broken power jack and this is going to be a desolder tutorial on how to remove a broken piece and as you can see in this video here on this picture this has some oxidation that just kind of built up and I think it's just some heat that makes these jacks go bad. This is a gaming laptop so there's a lot of heat going through that power jack and the first step here in the desoldering process is to add some flux uh, and then after I add the flux I usually put some solder on there too, some fresh solder and this really breaks up the existing solder that's there. Sometimes it can be hard to get it to heat up and and get that solder flowing. So adding flux and adding solder to the jack that's already in there that you want to remove is a great way to start. And I'm using a Hako FX888D soldering iron with a flathead style soldering tip. That's really important too. Those pointy tips that these soldering irons come with, uh, they don't really get onto that through hole very well. That flathead kind of lets you, uh, lets it get it flush with the through hole so it comes out much easier that way. And after I've done the flux and adding the solder, I'll take my desoldering braid and start sucking some of that solder out of the through hole. Um, this is one of those braids where it does have some flux built in too. There's multiple styles of braid. I'll have a link in the description on the one I use. I've used multiple different kinds and I just prefer the one I have here. Um, and there's some other ones that you know might work just fine, but I'll put that link down there so you guys know which one I'm using. And I'm setting my soldering iron temperature to about 800 degrees. That's pretty typical, 800, 850 um, for, for the desoldering and the soldering process. And another little trick that I like to do is I like to try to desolder from each angle. You can look at that through hole as kind of like a square and you can put the soldering iron on each side of that square so there's kind of four spots you can put that soldering iron and just putting that soldering iron in different spots will help you get that solder out of there. Sometimes these can be really easy to desolder and sometimes they can be really difficult so doing what I'm doing here now I'm hitting it from the other side of the other angle and just trying to get that heat flow inside that through hole to suck the solder up properly. And if you, if you run into a situation where it's not coming out very easily, then you want to just start this process over again. You can add solder, add flux, and then start doing the desoldering with the braid again. Sometimes it doesn't come up perfectly the first time, and so you might have to repeat these steps that I'm doing here. And then every time that solder braid gets filled up too much, you want to cut it off like I did just there. Uh, you don't want that solder braid with the solder already in it to touch any of the components around the jack, so if it's getting long enough to where it's going to touch something, just make sure you clip that off so you don't hit some kind of piece of circuitry around the jack. And just like I'm doing there, I'm going around that through hole just to get it at different angles to try to get that solder to come out. This is actually a, a Gigabyte gaming laptop motherboard. And what I see on these gaming laptops, the MSIs, the ASUS, all the different ones, very similar. Um, that, Like I showed in that picture at the beginning of the video, that oxidation just kind of builds up and you get that effect to where you can take the power cord and plug it in and you'll be able to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it to come on and to, to power up. And here what I do is I like to flip the board over. There's two, two support pins at the front that you can also have access to from the flip side. And it just helps with the desoldering process to, to try to get that on, on each side if you can. Uh, those back three pins, you can't really desolder them from the flip side, but uh, these two big support pins you can. So that's a good technique to do too. And I'm sorry I'm blocking the video a little bit there, but you just want to do what you would do on the other side. Is just kind of go around and hit that through hole from different angles to try to get the solder out. And here I'm just doing kind of a wiggle check to see how how this jack is coming out. If it wiggles really easily, um, I mean, you're never really going to get 100% of that solder out, so you kind of have to do a little bit of a wiggle trick. 
And if it doesn't come out very easily, like it didn't in this case right here, then you need to go back and keep desoldering. Um, when it is ready, a, a very small amount of pressure with that pliers will remove that jack. So, so if it doesn't come out easily, you definitely don't want to rip it out at all. Uh, you can damage the through holes. And as you can see here, I'm just re-adding solder to this right or left pin, uh, depending on which way you're looking at it, because it just didn't come out all the way. So sometimes you do have to repeat this process and, and make sure all that solder is out of there. And you can, when you do that wiggle test, you can kind of see where the, where the problem lies. And in this case, I could see that that front support pin did need some more desoldering. So now I'm going to do the wiggle test on it again here, and this time I don't even need the pliers. It's just incredibly loose, as you can see, and it just falls right out. That's kind of the result that you're looking for. You don't want to pull that thing out at all. It, wanted, it wants to just kind of fall out there, very low amount of pressure to get that thing out so you don't damage those holes. And now the jack is removed, and you can put a new one on here. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, just comment below.